evening to you, traveller. I see you have come to hear one of my many tales. A good bit of advice I've often heard given is, forewarned is forearmed. Mind, in my line of work, you meet a lot of people who were forewarned. Only, not all of them took the warning. I'm sorry? Oh no, nothing to concern you, my friend. Just the ramblings of a simple old fogman. Now, enough talk. Settle yourself down and listen to this tale that I call She Calls at Midnight. Bertram Harris was like any other signalman working for the North Western Railway. He lived in an ordinary house, on an ordinary street, in an ordinary town, and went to work every ordinary night in an ordinary signal box. Not mind that his shift was... Being a night shift signalman meant you didn't have to worry about keeping to a busy schedule for, other than the flying kipper, the post train, the wild nor'wester and the odd night goods train. There was hardly any traffic, except for the odd engine running light on its way to a job or back to its shed. So, naturally, it was quite a surprise for Bertram when something out of the ordinary happened to one night, whilst he was sitting by the little stove in his signal box. That's odd. Nobody should be ringing me at this time of night. Perhaps it's head office ringing to warn me about something. Hello? Wells works out signal box. Signalman Harris speaking. You've got to stop the train. I beg your pardon? What train's that, miss? You've got to stop the train. There's going to be a death on the line. A death? Look, where are you calling from? If you tell me I can- Hello? Hello? She's hung up on me. Okay, I better do what she says and stop the train. Whatever train is that, I've no idea. As so, as he'd been trained to do so, Mr. Harris set his signals to danger and signalled through to all boxes to hold any oncoming trains. He then waited for the arrival of a crewman or a phone call to inquire as to why the trains had been halted, but nothing came. He waited all night, but no crewman appeared and no phone call came. In the morning, a very perplexed Harris explained everything to the fat controller and the police superintendent. And then I waited all night, but nothing! Not even a phone call! I understand your confusion, Mr. Harris. But the fact remains that as a result of your actions, both the Flying Kipper, Post Trade, and Wild Norwester were held up, and on top of that, you have wasted time and resources of emergency services. That's quite correct. I've had my men searching every bit of track on the island. We even searched the branch lines to see if there'd been a mistake, and the lady in question had meant to call a branch line box instead, and nothing. I'm sorry, sir. I really can't explain any of this. Calm down, Mr. Harris. I think there's a perfectly rational explanation for this mystery phone call. And that is you have been the unfortunate victim of what my grandchildren call a prank call. How exactly they got the number of your box, I cannot say at this time. But, as I said, I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation for that too. If you like, Sir Charles, I'll have the telephone engineers place wiretaps on all the box phones. Then, if this or these pranksters call again, we'll be able to trace the call and send a constable round to have a word or two with their parents. I do think that's necessary, Superintendent. And I give you permission to go ahead with your plan. And so, the police placed wiretaps on every signal box across the island, relaying them all to a central hub at police headquarters in Vickerstown. For a while, there were no more calls similar to the one that Bert Harris had experienced, and, for a while, he began to think that the call had simply been just as the fact controller said, a simple prank, but that was until, just after midnight one foggy night, the phone in his box rang. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's the phone. Maybe it's that prankster again. Oh, I'd love to see the look on her face when her parents open the door to find a policeman in front. Wellsworth South, Signalman Harris speaking. You need to stop the train before it's too late. Ah, it's you again. 
Listen, what train do you want me to stop? Only, the last time I did, there was never a train! Not even in my section anyway, and the ones that weren't in my section were perfectly fine. The police said so. You need to stop the train before it's too late. Where is this train? Maybe I can get the message to the next signal box. You need to stop the train before it's too late. Oh, don't worry. I'll stop it. It was a devilish sense of glee that came over Bert Harris. He had been a signalman of a sterling record of thirty years, and he wasn't about to let some mischievous teenager get the better of him, and he returned to his duties. However, the next morning, Bert Harris would be in for a shock. What do you mean the tape was blank? I mean exactly that. From the time you answered the phone to the time you hung up, there was nothing on the tape except white noise. Then your equipment was faulty. I definitely heard the same girl repeating the same thing. You need to stop the train! Our equipment is not faulty. I had the engineers check the line and both the phones at our headquarters and your box. And I tell you, sir, there is nothing on that tape because there was nothing to record in the first place. Oh, I see. I get it. You think I imagined it. That I'm going senile. After all, I'm old enough for it, aren't I? Well, you listen to me, you jumped up traffic warden. I know what I heard. And I distinctly heard a woman telling me to stop a train that I don't know about. Mr. Harris, that will do. I understand that this is a most distressing ordeal for you, but you cannot take your frustrations on the superintendent who is only telling you what he knows. Sir Charles, forgive me for being so uh, forward, but uh, perhaps Mr. Harris would benefit from some time off. With all respect, sir, I'd be much happier if I stayed at work and put this matter to rest once and for all. I'll allow it for now, but this little transgression begins to affect your work, and I have no alternative to, to place you on suspension. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Clear as a bell, sir. And so, a determined Harris returned that night to his box, and, once the last train had passed for the night, he sat by the phone and waited, daring it to ring. As soon as you ring, I'm going to give you a right earful, my girl. The likes you've never heard. Wellsworth South, Signalman Harris speaking. Stop the train! Hurry! Took your time, didn't you? You're five minutes late! Now you listen here, girly. I've got no time playing your silly games, stopping trains that don't exist, and I should warn you, this phone's being monitored by the police this time. I hope they track you down and tell your old man what games you've been getting up to, and he ought to take his belt on you right across the backside until you find it impossible to sit down for the rest of your natural life. Stop the train! Hurry! You keep saying that, but there's no train! The last train cleared my section over an hour ago! Now look, you sound like a sensible girl, and I'm sorry to lose my temper, but you've got to understand what this is doing to me! I'm an old man, girl! This stress isn't good for me! Stop the train! You need to stop the train! Don't you flippin' dare interrupt me when I'm talking, girl! Didn't your parents teach you manners? Oh, wait, obviously not! Otherwise, you wouldn't be playing these stupid games and wasting my blinking time! Listen, if it's so flippin' important that this train needs to be stopped, well, why don't you go stop it yourself? <coughs> yeah, same to you! Oh, not content with playing your silly games on the phone, and now you've decided to get your boyfriend to act the goat by banging on my door, haven't you? Well, I'll show him! Listen, you, I've had just about enough of your games, and I've got the... Law? You'd better make it an ambulance as well. My train just run over a woman two miles back up the line. It was all true what the guard said. Indeed, a special consignment from the mainland had run over a young woman who had been walking along the trackside. 
it was established she lived in Wellsworth and worked as a clerk in a bank in Kildane and had failed to return home on time, most likely as a result of missing the last train home. Obviously startled by the sight of the locomotive bearing down on her at speed, she had failed to get out of the way in time and had been dragged under the wheels of the mainland engine. Everyone was saddened by the death of the woman, but no more so than Bert Harris. He now believes that the voice on the phone was that of the woman's spirit, warning him to stop the train in the hopes that doing so would change the outcome. Bert Harris no longer works on the railway. Instead, he tends to the Wellsworth Church graveyard, where the young woman was buried, in hopes that he can make up for what he failed to do so while she was still alive. And so, let that be a warning to you, traveller. Should anyone give you a piece of advice, such as look before you leap, never count your chickens before they hatch, or even stop the train, you'd be wise to heed it. Ah, the clock doth toll the hour, and I must return to my work. Take care on your journey, traveller. I shouldn't like to see you again so soon, especially if you've happened to ignore any advice I may have given you.